We're back at Lake Elsinore Casino because where else would we be right now? We get into the 2-3 game for $300, which is the max you can buy in for, and we're feeling great. First hand of the night, we pick up pocket fives under the gun. 300 in our stack, I raise it up to 10. Cut off in the small blind, want action, and they put in the call. Three ways to the flop with 33 in the pot comes ace, seven, deuce. We hit none of it, so I check. Cutoff bets 10 and the small blind calls and we're getting around 5 to 1 on a call. I'm not going to go anywhere just yet. I put in 10 bucks. The turn with 63 in the pot comes the 10 of hearts pairing the 10 and the action checks around. On the jack of clubs on the river, king queen ends up getting there and the small blind is going to drag a nice $93 pot. Next hand we have ace 3 of clubs in middle position. Folds to me and I raise it to 12. The button now 3 bets us to 40 and the big blind cold calls. So here we're most likely up against a strong hand, but we have a potential to hit a disguise 2 pair. We have uh, straight draw and flush draw possibilities, so I'm going to call and see what proceeds. 3 ways to the flop with 122 in the pot comes 9 of hearts, 8 of spades, 7 of hearts. Terrible board for our hand and it gets checked around, so we're going to go to the turn. Turn is the 3 of spades, which gives us a pair. But now when the big blind leads for 40 into 122, uh, I just, with one pair, I don't think that we're good here. I don't really want to make a move just yet, so I fold. The button calls, so we're going to see a river, which is the nine of clubs. Action gets checked around. The big blind shows ace king, which makes sense from cold calling from the button. But what doesn't make sense is the guy who three bet us preflop. Uh, it has king seven and proceeds to win a 202 dollar pot with bottom pair on the flop. Interesting. We buy in for $30 more. I just like to stay topped up sometimes. So we're in for $330 now. We look down at pocket tens from early middle position and I make a standard raise here to $14. And uh, we get called by the middle position player. And now the small blind does something interesting. She doesn't fold, she doesn't call. That leaves a shove, and that's what she does. $91 all in the middle. It's an additional $77 to me, and I don't want to fold. Um, just, I have pocket tens, it's a good hand. She could be doing this with ace, jack, plus. Um, sure, we're gonna be up against jacks, queens, kings, aces. I end up shoving to isolate. I don't want to go multi-weight here with pocket tens. I want to see all five cards, and the middle position player gets out of the way. Heads up to a run out. All in, no action. Let's see the board dealer. Jack of diamonds, five of hearts, ace of diamonds. Terrible, two cards uh, over our tens that beat us. The turn is the nine of hearts and the river is a six of spades. She shows pocket queens, which is one of the hands that had us absolutely crushed. And uh, she's gonna drag that $199 pot. We rebuy for the second time here, now for $100. So we're in for 430. We look down at ace jack offsuit from the small blind. Middle position raises to 13 over a limper. There's two calls for his $13 bet. It goes around to us in the small blind, and I think this is a great opportunity to make a move. Both the callers' ranges in late position are capped since they decided not to raise multi-way, and uh, we block a lot of hands that have us beat. The original raiser also chose a small sizing, in my opinion, so if we can get through him, I'm confident that we'll take it down. I make it $67 here, which is a little bit less than 3x, plus I add an X for every caller. The original razor folds, which is ideal, and both the callers fold, and we take down $47 in dead money. And uh, after we drag that pot, we can't, uh, can't figure out who said it, but somebody yelled out, nice squeeze. So we gotta be aware of that. Pocket kings are headed our way in the small blind. We've got two limps to us, I raise it to $17. And only the under the gun position player calls, unfortunately. Heads up to the flop and we're out of position, but we got King Kong, we're not too worried. It comes jack, four, three, rainbow. And uh, obviously we have an over pair here. I wanna target all the pairs and especially all the jacks. So I bet a little bit less than half pot here. I bet $17, wanting all pairs to call. He calls, which is ideal, and we're off to a turn, which is the deuce of diamonds. Putting two diamonds out there, 
And uh, I think if we keep betting here, we lose all the middle pocket pairs. But if we check here, we allow him to bluff if he doesn't have a made hand. Or better yet, we can underrepresent our pocket kings. So that's the, uh, the path that I take here. I check, and now he takes a stab for $35. Although I'd love to just call here and let him keep bluffing on the river, that's just a bit too risky because when I check to him, he could easily check it behind. So for all those reasons, I have to raise here and get value from all jacks. We checked it to him, he bet, we got all the bluffs to bet, he's probably not going to bet again on the river. I raise it to 105. Unfortunately, he probably had a bluff because he folds, uh, but we're going to scoop that $214 pot. $405 now in our stack, and we look down at pocket jiggities, as Mr. Owen would say. We're in the under the gun position. I raise to 15 and the small blind is the only taker, so we're heads up to the flop. 33 in the pot, it's all undercards, 6, 3, 4. I make a standard bet for 20, he makes a standard fold, and we're going to drag that pot. Interesting hand here when we pick up a7 of hearts from the cutoff. Folds to me, I raise it to 11, and we get called out of both the blinds. Three ways to the flop with 33 in the pot comes 6, 9, 3 with two hearts. We have the nut flush draw with the ace of hearts. And I bet 20 in here trying to build a pot. See what transpires. Give people the rope to raise. Small blind gets out of the way and the big blind just calls unfortunately. So we're heads up to the turn. Turn is the four of diamonds. So now deuce five and five seven make a straight. Big blind just checks. I decide to check it behind here. I want to see if we can make a flush on the river. Uh, I don't always. I got to balance my turn checking range. I can't. Just be doing it with bluffs. I have to have equity too, so that's what I do. The river gives us the flush that we want in the deuce of hearts, and now he leads for $20, which is even better news. We're going to get some value here for sure. I want to get the max value, though, in case he made a flush or has a straight, so I raise it up 5x to 101 Dalmatians, no chips, and he pretty quickly folds. While he's folding, he said middle pair. Looks like he was just trying to name his price on the river, but obviously we're not calling there ever. And we're going to scoop that $194 pot. Ace four of hearts from the hijack. There's a few limps to us and I raise it up to $17. And we get one of the limpers to call. So we're going heads up to the flop. Which comes king of clubs, queen of hearts, deuce of clubs. We have the range advantage and some backdoor draws. So I fire for $22. And he gets sticky and puts in the call. Turn with 83 in the pot comes the four of diamonds. Which completes the rainbow and gives us some showdown value. He checks it to us again, and I check behind here. We just want to get to showdown and see if we're good. River is the five of clubs, which doesn't change too much other than three six now makes it straight. He checks again, and I don't think there's a good chance that we can get a better hand to fold, like a king or a queen. I think they'll just call down here after we checked on the turn. So I check again, and uh, that's what happens. He shows queen 10 and ends up scooping that pot. Ace 10 of diamonds here from the cutoff, and I raise it up to 12, and uh, we just get called out of the big blind. Heads up in position to the flop, which gives us top pair. It's ace, jack, seven with two clubs, and uh, we're going to be looking to fire here when it gets checked to us, but that's not what happens. He donk leads into us for $20, uh, and when people donk lead, I just find it particularly strange. At the lower six games, people will do this with flush draws primarily, so we could be raising here for value. But uh, we also want to get a clean turn. There's a lot of really bad turns. We block a couple of them with the 10 of spades in our hand. King queen um, would be a hand that we want to look out for. Obviously, all the club draws and uh, a couple aces beat us as well, like ace king and ace queen. Although the, I find that strange if he'd have those hands because he just called out of the big blind. When I check, we're going to the turn, which comes the deuce of hearts, which is exactly the card we wanted to see. A complete brick. He continues betting here and he bets $30. And I think a raise here is probably the optimal move. We want to get value out of all the draws, like I said. But I, occasionally I don't make the optimal move live, as we all do. We make mistakes. And I make the call here. I just want to see another clean river. 126 in the pot. The river comes a 7 of spades, which is really good in the sense that the front door flush misses. But on the other hand, it's bad in the sense that we're now chopping against all aces that we were beating. I don't see a point in going for value here because a jack is pretty much the only hand that we get value from, but it's going to have a very hard time calling, and all of the missed flush draws will just fold, so for those reasons, I check behind. 
he shows us something that we did not expect to see, which was Ace King did not decide to raise us out of the blinds. Um, I think I lost the minimum there. He only got two small streets and then nothing on the river. Uh, I think it was incredibly strange the way he played it, but I'm fortunate to have just lost the minimum there. He's going to scoop a $126 pot. We then flop a straight with 4-5 of diamonds and we're on to the next hand. We're in the under the gun position and the table is pretty dead. So uh, I straddle trying to get the action going. We look down at 5-7 of clubs. Four people call the straddle and uh, we're feeling a bit frisky here. So when I have the option to do so, I raise it up to $29. My left doesn't believe me in the slightest. They put in the call and the button's in the same boat. He calls as well. So we're going three ways to the flop with 104 now in the pot. The dealer puts out queen 710 with two diamonds, a pretty wet board, and a pretty bad flop for our exact hand. But in the end, it's not a terrible flop for our perceived range. We're going to have all the over pairs, ace queen, king queen, king jack in our range, which all have a ton of equity. So I take a stab here for that reason. If we get called here and we don't pick up any equity on the turn, I'm going to be shutting down here all day. This is our one-time bet for $45 into 104, a little bit less than half pot. And fortunately for us, we get good news when both of them toss their hands into the muck. And that results in us scooping a $149 pot. Last hand of the night here, we look down at 3-5 of hearts from under the gun. And I straddle once again. There's four calls, and I know this is my last hand before I rack up and leave. So I raise it up to 26 and see if we can't scoop another pot. But we get two callers. Same situation as the last hand, we're going three ways to the flop, which comes eight of diamonds, queen of spades, ten of clubs. Terrible board again, but don't tell me that because I decide to bet 35 into 90, around one third pot, just terrible in my opinion. One opponent calls, one shoves, I get out of the way, it's pretty easy fold, and the other guy calls with seven, nine of hearts for open ended. Turn gives him the straight and he scoops that hand, but we're not in it, so who cares. It's been a long night, so we put our chips in the rack and head to the cage. 40, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Thank you. Okay, that wraps up the session here at Lake Elsinore. We got into the game for 300, rebought for another 130. Uh, we ended up cashing out for 374, so we ended up losing $54, unfortunately. It was a grind, but uh, hope you guys like the consistency of these videos. If you do, be sure to like the video and subscribe. I'm trying to post twice a week now. So if you guys appreciate that, definitely uh, reward me with some of your uh, actions that you can do on your end. As always, see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.